Hello everyone, Delightful here. I like the novel and the new, so today, let's see what the new world has for me and you. We got Lunacid today, I got it. It's really good. You ever play Kingsfield? It's like a, well, it's a lot like Kingsfield. It's a retro, first person, RPG dungeon crawler, yeah. I never actually played Kingsfield. Never did. I got about two hours in this. I never PS1, so I never, never saw it. Didn't know about it till later. Watched lots of Let's Plays on it, though. Well, yeah, more recently. Look at this. It has that... We're in the Hollow Basin. Some of it's also a Dark Souls influence of the game as well, but again, more Kingsfield, because... Well, for those who don't know... Well, Kingsfield is by the same developers as Dark Souls, and Demon Souls, you know? And Elden Ring. So that's what inspired the original Demon Souls and then Dark Souls. The, Kingsfield. Which is... Incredible. So this game is a Kingsfield like pretty much. It's good. So you start, you spawn over there, you come through here, you get the sword there. And then, so like Dark Souls, you rest at these shrines, right? These are like your not bonfires, the crystals. This will heal you, this will reset monsters. But like the first Dark Souls, monsters will only reset like three times, I think. So you can grind a little bit, but not a massive amount. And you can warp between them. You don't have to get the Lord's Vessel like in the first Dark Souls. <sighs> Let me just check this here. I can show you the level up screen. I got some points. So, and when you start, this is a really good RPG. Like, you can pick all sorts of classes at the start. I believe there are nine off the top of my head. That's really, really good. Like, like Dark Souls, right? You can be the Forsaken, right? You start at look, level one, like all trash stats. So it's more of, a, more of a challenge start. You can be the knight who has more... More tanky, more strength. The witch, which is what I chose. You start with more mana. <coughs> Sorry. Can be an undead. Can be a freaking vampire. Yeah, there's a lot of choices here. A striking look to it. I think I'll save those points for later. So if I hit tab there, I get... <laughs> I'm almost <laughs> up to another level. I mean, I want to show a bit of progression. Oh, yeah, I want to show progression. But I want to show... Like, differences between the stats as they go up. Because it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It's refreshing this here. Yeah. So I mentioned Kingfield, right? Yeah, I did. So you can jump. You can attack. You can power attack. I got a magic ring. Magic is tied to rings in this. Flame spear and a kind of crappy ghost light. I know where I need to go now. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll go there now. So I can attack things, I can break things. Oh, this is a loop back. The game has a loop back sort of design, like like the first Dark Souls, right? Excellent loop backing, and you're constantly opening up hidden passages and stuff. This is the chest where the <laughs> where the ring is. Thankfully, these are not respawning. They'd be broken if it was. Because you just, you just go back and forth, loot the same thing, then sell it. There's a hub area as well where you can upgrade your gear. Oh, I love that the dev actually shows the music and the artist when you go to an area, right? Often music doesn't get the... It's very important to a game. It sets atmosphere a lot, but it doesn't get the, the attention it deserves. Because, you know, a lot, of, a lot of games, they don't say what the music is when it plays. You gotta look it up, right? Well, here they say it right there. Got water. Like, we're, we're underground, but this is pretty good. It's nice and bright, easy to see. That's a monster. <laughs> Watch out. So, uh, I can... I have magic. One, two, three. Uh, blast with my fireball. So it's in and out. Oof, that was a crit. So monsters have soft spots, right? Like most monsters, as you might think. Hit him in the face, that's a weak spot. There are snails. You don't want to hit their, their shell, right? Because they take less damage from it. It's a striking looking game. Reminds me maybe a bit like the uh, the wizardry is a bit too visually, but you know, it's just real time. A critique I have about the game, of course, is that, uh, I should mention it, you cannot sprint. No, there's no sprinting. You, you just put points in your your speed skill, and that makes you naturally faster. Or you can put points in your deck so you can jump higher. But note, I don't have a stamina bar. Jump, swing, as much as I want. Like, I got like a little timer going on when I can do my power attack, and that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I bought a, a key. I gotta go... There's sort of like this Metroid-like gate. I got like the key to open now though, so I gotta find the sign to where it is. So you don't get a map in this, you just kinda navigate around. 
So I suppose it's more like Kingsfield in that regard, because Ultima Underworld famously did give you a very good map. I looked myself around. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, then. We'll go this way. Yeah, so what I did was I took the wrong path. This is where I want the sprint. But it's fine. We get to show the game a little bit more. We should combat. That's how I open this, this door here. Let's loop back to the, the shrine. So you can do a bit of grinding if you want to. So if you... You'll kill the monsters, right? And you'll hit this to, re to reset them. And to save. And to heal yourself, right? And then the monsters always spawn a few times. Which is nice. Oh, this is where the sword is. Newest of the Fallen, take up thine sword and fight. I actually went to the, the hub area and upgraded the sword. Now it's a heritage sword. It's a steel long sword typically given to the castle guard. The font's kind of... Through the castle fell long ago, these swords remain a testament to the quality of the royal armory and have been passed down for generations. So previously it's like a super crappy sword. What was that? And now it's much better. I went to like a well and blessed it or whatever. Flame spear ring. You have to find that. I was thinking maybe the witch should start with a ring. I have him just start with that one. So it's not in the chest. Put like gold in there or something. Just because it feels weird to start as a mage and not be able to cast magic, right? Flaming javelin, weaponized form of pyromancy created by the fire witch Ashley. Here we go, that's what I was looking for. No, is it? Seek the slumbering creatures of moonlight. They're the last existing door. So hint. Yeah, the moon. The, the setting in this world, I believe, is the moon collapsed. And it's like crash stuff onto the surface and... The world's kind of ruined. But I guess it didn't crash enough stuff down to completely depopulate the planet. Just, you know, little bits. If you jump down there, you will die. Maybe. Ooh. But maybe if I get, like, a feather fall ring, I'll live, right? And maybe if I, my jump gets higher, I can go there, right? So, already at the start, right, the kind of character you are opens up paths, right? Previously, because my jumps are high enough, I can't get there. All right? I don't have a ring, so I can't get there. But maybe... Oh, I can also break things. Yeah. Oh, I got some coppers. Nice. Oh, sorry. Silver. We're on the silver currency. Here. Break those. Those will respawn. It's a little bit of cash they'll give you. Rivers of Death. Very nice. Now, what I'm looking for... There it is right there. That's what I'm looking for. Break those. Oh, yeah. Skeletons and stuff. Or zombie. Yeah, you're back. Hello, Mrs. Snail. <laughs> One shot. He fades away. And that... Oh, that, that sound is so... It's very Kingsfield. But dial up to 11. Yep. Great game. Though I suppose if you were to play Kingsfield now, I'd probably start with like 4. That was for the PlayStation. I never had, never played it though. I had a PlayStation 2. No, 4 was for the PlayStation 2. Temple of Silence. Yeah, I can get into that. That's the way I went previously. But yeah, the Kingsfield 4 is for the PlayStation 2. Yeah. I just wasn't aware of Kingsfield, so I didn't know about it. Ah, the gate. Now I should be able to get in here. No effect. Hey, I bought key. Do I have to do something with the key? Quick items. Yeah, I bought the key. A bewitched key in, in the hub area I bought it. It was like for one silver, so they want you to have it. A bewitched key made from ocean bone, able to remove the old enchanted gates that were put in place after the crusade. Okay. Or a crystal shard, too. A fragile shard of a crystal. By breaking it, the magic that is released surrounds the user and warps the... Oh, okay. So it's like a... It's a wyvern feather from, like, Dragon Warrior or... Homeward Bone from Dark Souls, yeah. So this, yeah, that kind of thing. And healing potions and mana potions. So I want the key, and I should be able to just use the key. You, you use key. So I have. The yeah. <laughs> that was horrifying. So I selected it with the the one through what is it? One through four, one through five. And he jammed it in the eye. Creepy. Oh, I should show. I think I mentioned it when I was streaming, but not when I was recording. The game has really good gamepad support. For a freaking first-person dungeon crawl, you don't often see that, but it feels good to play. It's obviously not as responsive and good as playing it first with mouse and keyboard, because it was designed for that, the first-person game. Whereas the gamepad's primarily for, like, 2D side-scrollers. But this feels good. I'm moving around with left stick and looking around with right stick. RT, I can attack. I can jump with X. Oh, sorry. A is my expect. X is... What is magic in this? Oh yeah, I can also block. I, I don't really do it. I prefer to just dodge. I can just hold the block if I want with, what was that? LT and then left button is magic. You see how it's charging up? Based off my intelligence of 12, three seconds to charge that up. But this feels good, right? We'll play with it a little bit. 
And this would be very referential to Dark Souls. Oh, look, the water's flowing, too. Because, you know... Oh, not Dark Souls. <laughs> no. Although Dark Souls was a PC game as well. No, it was a... Yeah, Dark Souls was a... A PlayStation game, yeah. Initially, and then, of course, it was ported to the Windows. But yeah, Kingsfield. Kingsfield was initially designed for gamepads. So this controls well if gamepads good. Wait, what is that? Torch acquired. Okay. Back to access this and then... Eh. What, what does Torch do? It's not a spell. It's an item. Yeah. Crude torches like these are common within dark tunnels, it seems. For as long as recorded history, comma, people have sought to drive with the darkness that surrounds us. Oh yeah, you also build weapon XP as you fight with it. Oh, that's how I upgraded the sword. I leveled it up enough, and I went home, and I blessed it in the water. Oh, I've learned something now. That's really important. That that goes into RPG components I've talked about. I just made that connection. As you use a weapon, it levels up. What? All sorts of games do that. Primarily, it's a JRPG thing. It's cool. Like, uh, what's a game that's very prominent for doing that? Old school console JRPGs. Was it dis? It's it's like a Final Fantasy Tactics game, but you're like a, a weird little demon. You can like level up your weapons and go inside them. It was weird as all hell. But yeah. Then you can upgrade it at the shrine in the hub area. So cool. Good to know that. Lots of little things like that. So, I mean, do I want to level up the torch? It's it's a lot less damage. Its guard is trash. Its back. Step. I, I, I guess maybe. How do we, how do we equip it with the? There we go. All right. So I believe Q is weapon swap. Q is weapon swap. It gives me a lot of visibility. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So that confirms the other question I had that Q is my weapon swap on the mouse and keyboard. I thought it was. I should also mention this as I. It's why I believe in the gamepad. It that weapon swap, yeah. That you can map keys technically, but you have to do it through notepad. Yeah, I'll we'll show that. Is it, is it why? It is why. That's nice. So you, what you do is you go to settings. Also, you can. Looks like there's only one audio control. There's actually more here. Music. I yeah. So if we were to rebind controls. Yeah, it, it opens notepad. Yeah, it's it's not very good. That's that's not user friendly at all. <laughs> that's super intimidating, hard to read. So just, if at some point it'd be great if it worked in game. I mean the controls are good, it's just you know, if you wanted to change them, it'd be a huge PETA. You know. But yeah, we'll, we'll use this this torch for a bit. Why not? Looks nice. There's a warm light to it. I have a ring, a ghost ring that provides a bit of a different kind of light. It's not like as good as the magic light you get in Barony. Barony's magic light's much better. Hello. I wonder if do I need this. No, it's not that dark. And if you worry about the game being too dark, you can like adjust the gamma. I got it, you know, not bad. The default attack is a bonk, as you might expect, because I'm just primarily just using the fire to hurt, and as opposed to just bonking them with this glorified stick that I have. We're descending down into the dark. And no music here. Oh, I wonder. I want to see. Like, what is. Oh, what well, yeah, magic was. I want to see if magic will. Magic produces light. Yay, that's nice. A nice little attention to detail. I wasn't sure it would. I should note that. The fire spell produces a little bit of light. Just a little bit. But that could be helpful. There are edge cases. You might want that. If you don't know what the hell's down there. I put something around that corner, wouldn't you? Remember, these, <laughs> this game is heavily inspired by the Cerebro Temple. So heavily inspired by the First King's Field, which are the, the company made Dark Souls, so... Monsters hiding in the dark is kind of a thing that they do. I don't see anything. That's creepy. What's that? I don't know. 
Oh, oh, okay, that's oil. That's burning oil. We've learned something. That's cool. It's really cool. Now, I wouldn't have known that if I didn't have a torch out. Wait, what if... If I break the oil... And it burns out. Oh, that's so cool. That's oil. And then what, what if... What if I hit it again? Huh. Ash is acquired. Are you also oil? Yeah, okay. That That's really cool. That's not at all obvious. The pots around are oil pots. They burn when exposed to fire. The next question I have, therefore, is will the magic do it? Probably. Ashes acquired. Ashes acquired. So do break things. Let's see. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Oh, missed opportunity. I'm exposed to torch fire. Shame it doesn't work with fire lance, flame lance, whatever. Flame spear. <laughs> One thing I didn't say. Maybe that, that'd be a nice addition. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah, I'm using the game pal trying to do a bit more. Just to show up the difference. I'm not as good with it. Because What's that? Really good music direction in this game as well. Like I said, in the creepy atmosphere of the game. It gives me vibes of the catacombs from Dark Souls. I saw that. What the hell is that? Like, aiming magic would be a real pe- Hello. Oh, hello, what are you? Alright, you have no fa- you, Your face is worm. We, we talk? No. Okay then. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's dark, dark. All right. Creepy. They've nailed the creepy vibe. I love it. Can I read? No, nothing to say. Can't break that portcullis. Look at that portcullis. It's obviously, like you can tell the shape of it that it's it's held down. Like it's it's down. It's not. So to lift that, you have to lift it, but there'd be a bar restraining it, being able to lift it, right? It's Because you kind of want it to go from the ground, right? But you can tell that's not the case, because there's no section there for it to descend down. Like, the physics of dungeon traps I just find interesting. Well, creepy, creepy stuff here. Okay. So as you see, the game has a huge atmospheric, atmosphere focus. Thing vile. An exploration focus. Hmm. I could be breaking these things for a bit of money, but I might need the f the light. Like I put zombies in here. When you put zombies in here, I put zombies in here. I'd fill this place with zombies. And probably behind the damn portcullis I'm gonna raise. Oh, I might have to break those for. I wonder if I break things with this. Do I level up the weapon? Because if you look... Oh, don't do that, don't do that. Heritage Torch is already leveled up, so I can't level it up anymore. The torch, I need to level... Well, I should use the torch to level it. Hmm, can't go that way. I don't know if this level... It, it does! It's that little, that little blue bar on the upper right. It levels up the sword, of the weapon. So I should be running around just smashing stuff with this. That's really cool. I can do that. Yeah. Hmm. That goes in RPG. You can level up the weapon using it to break stuff too. Good to know. There's little things. I mean, little things that are nice in this game. Will that hurt me? Aha, it moved a little bit. There's actually a class you can be the undead who's actually very susceptible to fire. Which is super interesting. Oh, ah, she's acquired it there. Urns. But they filled with some kind of like. Yeah, they're, they're funeral urns or something, but they're filled with some kind of like sanctified oil to preserve or something, and it's 
flammable. Or it's like it can open jars and their stuff is. No, it's ashes because they're burning. Yeah, the oil is just sacred oil to preserve them, I guess. Oh, but I can also stop the burning by breaking it again. Hmm. Cool. Such an interesting game. I'm a bit of an ash farmer now, it seems. And some silvers. Many silvers. That looks like something. Ugh, what? Oh, yeah, I just a little flicker. Falls in a illusionary wall. I don't know if those are a thing. I don't know if the game wants me to wall hunt. There were illusionary walls in Kingsfield. I do remember that. Or well, at least hidden, hidden secret doors. I don't know if there are any. I believe there were illusionary walls. I believe there were. Okay, so if you're not gonna like, talk to me, I can. Okay. He's napping pretty good. Can I? Wait. Okay. Whoa. I probably should have done that. Its light is out. He probably sacrificed himself to light that with soul or something, and I burned it out. Whoops. Bad. Well, maybe if I break all those things, it will open a gate. Maybe. So creepy. No? Well, I may have to break them all. More ash. So you see, the main focus of the game, you know, this combat, but it's primarily exploration. What's that? Oh, it's like a... It's incense. That's what it is. Ash is acquired. I do wish there was a separate slider for SFX. That's a bit loud. I can't independently adjust that. There's only master setting and music. I kept the master down anymore. It's only 25%. That might be a bit much. Can't get in there. So I get in here through a book. Soon we'll be free of the accursed well. This is where I dropped this, the well. For great prophet Abdul has found a way out. While we are tethered here physically, our minds can be extracted with enlightenment. Do it. No, is that extricated? Extricated. So yeah, they, they put their... They're astrally projected themselves to who knows where, but their bodies are obviously gone. So, I mean, are they still around or not? Who knows? Like in the astral projection spell from D and D, like if your body's destroyed, you, you're dead. So you have to like hide your body. But liches can astrally project as well, and they're technically dead already, but they still have you know intact phylactery. It might be something about breaking all those to get in somewhere. Maybe. What was that? Always open. I don't know. No, it was. Okay. There's no map, so I don't know. <laughs> Wait, leveling up my torch. It's creepy. I can't, like, light these or anything. Do I break them? Hitting them's not doing anything. I don't love this torch. Nothing else. You look a little different. Nothing. Can't get in there either. Hmm. Put it in. <laughs> I have that key now. The key is zero. It's like a hidden switch. That's a dungeon master thing. Like hiding a switch to progress. Oh, is it hidden here? Can't drink the water. Can't hit that.
I already read it. Okay, okay. It's not the book. Hmm. What if I use magic? I can't ignite it. Wait, I was just checking. You think the torch would do it, but you never know. Fascinating. If I head east. That's my plan. I'm just gonna break all these things. Didn't move. Anything here? I can't ignite the incense. I can break stuff, so I will break stuff. I'll do the thing the game lets me do. I think it's through here. No. Two. Three. It's not moving, so I can't break him. Hmm, I was just here. Can I break this? Collapse the... No. Okay. Hmm. Alright, that's how I got in, right? Yeah. Alright, that's how I got in. It can't be this way. And this has to be the way to go, because I got the key. And I was like... I don't know if it's going to break the walls. Hmm. Spell on them? No. Well, I suppose I can show off the other spell I have. It's the ghost light. So if I cast V, he'll cast the other spell. See? It's not quite as bright as the light you get from, say, Baron even cast light, which is much better. But what this will let me do is. Have, yeah, it's, it's very blue. It's, it's not very dim light. I don't much care for it. I find I actually see better without it. But that's the light spell. Do you interact with things? Do I, I mean, it looks like that light spell will fit in these hole in these guys' face. Does he have to get in? <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm trying to think outside the box here to solve this. It's not oil. Is it, no, it's not a button. It's not that way. It has to be this way. Like a map would help me in that immensely. I tend to get turned around. Even Kingsfield gave me a compass. I don't even have a compass. <laughs> This is the way, yeah. And you know I'm gonna hit a switch down here, and that's gonna... No, I've been here, mother... Hmm. I don't know. I can't pick up and move things. So there's not no, like, pressure plate or anything. I know that. I can't... Yeah. I don't like puzzles. Like, I don't mind, like, cleverly solving things, but... This is just... This isn't, this is just like process of elimination. Where the hell is it, you know? Like, what do I do? What have I not done? Where have I not been? Do I climb? No, I don't climb. Eh. Seriously? It's gotta be a hidden button. Oh, that's annoying. Mm, I don't like hidden buttons. Is there a clue? We'll soon be free of the accursed place. The great prophet of duel has found a way out. He hasn't found a physical way out. That doesn't help me. I, I don't have a telekinesis spell, so I can't do anything interesting there. You'd think it would be something like this, but I've tried to interact with these. They, they did nothing. Ugh, I didn't get to anything. What if I cut him up? No, that's not it. I hope for more progression. Uh. Right, so I head in here. I take the left. Like, I see the smoke. I can't ignite the smoke, though. I've tried. And then I got charged completely. No. Like, that would be clever to ignite all the burnt urns, but that doesn't work. These gates are all shut. So it's just some kind of weird little passage I've missed. I break you, collapse the wall, no. I'm very immersive, but... 
it's this way. Dungeon Mouse have like a little button on the wall. I haven't seen no. Can I push no. Ugh. God damn it. <laughs> I might have to look it up. And that's annoying to me. Like, this is why you offer a map. This is not great. Wait. Is this the way I came in? Maybe I have to go up again. God damn it. See, I'm getting all turned around. I can't access a map. I can't check. I don't know, maybe I missed the side passage, we'll head up. Did you look how it's dark down here, as you might expect it to be? No, wait, wait. No. If nothing else, I can find some snails and level up this torch, and then show off the hub area. Then I will look up what the hell I'm supposed to do in that temple, and that will be in the second video. Ugh, irksome. It's probably something stupid, just a little thing I didn't see. They just don't ignite, I can break them. The... I can break them. Let me see, if I break these, is the bar moving? It is a little bit, huh. See, if you want to put the time in, you can definitely pop up your weapons pretty quickly. Can I ignite this snail shell now? There's Oreo as well. Good to know. Read. We're back here. Because of course. I do like how this, this level up weapon level up system makes these plants actually interesting. At first I thought it was like be gathering them like Nelt Underworld to eat or something. Like going like dream visions from two, but no. No, I can just attack them. To level up my weapon. Which is fun. What are these out oh, through here? I haven't leveled up yet. Not yet. It's almost there. Find one of those creepy monsters. Show off some of the abilities they can do. They can curse you. And it makes you not be able to attack. It's pretty nasty. It doesn't wear off. It wears off pretty quickly. Yeah, it wears off for about 10 seconds. But it's like a powerful ability I wouldn't mind having. Like a debuff as opposed to just blasting them with fire, which is fun too. But you see why I like a split. That would be nice. It's interesting the torch is not like <laughs> sorry, consumable items as you might expect from something like Skyrim or Oblivion. No, they're like actual weapons and it gets better as you use it, which is interesting. Curious about what it will turn into. And will it go out under the water? No, it's like a magic torch. Why would it, right? Interestingly, your speed does not slow down when you're in this this water. It's like ankle deep. Shin deep. I think it would slow you down a little bit, but I guess it was, seems a bit annoying. Kill those snails. Annoying. I just need something to beat up. See the hands uh, lopped off. 
when you dropped in here it's pretty cool they they chop your hand off the late intro is a bit long so i didn't show it but the intro bit that actually concerns your character is very interesting all right This is why I need a sprint. You do move a little faster jumping, but it's a bit much. That's something I was thinking. Maybe I should put my level ups in speed. It's 0.1 for every one. So eventually it'll be noticeable and interesting. So I'll show it. Yeah, so speed, I have two actually. So if I were to put my, like, jump is 4.2. So I put points in dexterity. My jump goes up by 0 0.5. 0 0.1 each one. So eventually I should be able to jump up there. Do I, is that what I have to do though? That seems rough, because eventually I'm not going to be able to level up anymore, because like, the monsters will only respond so many times. I mean, it gives me alternate progression, but I'm not certain how much jump I need. Whereas, oh yeah, it's also with ranged weapons, you can buy a, hmm, you can buy a crossbow in the hub area. It makes me think you don't have to try to keep track of bolts, though, which is, you know, you should be able to do that. You're in an underground area, right? You'd think, like, resources would be a bit rare. Speed gives me 0.1 for every one, so it's like starts at like 10.1 for me at six, but I can get it to. Oh wow, it goes up quite a bit. So it's it's gonna be 0.3. I thought it was gonna be like 0.1. Jump gives me 0.1, which makes sense. Jump doesn't go up by 0.3. Is that really? Yeah, speed is about three percent. That's not bad. Ten. I can get it up to. Yeah, I'll do that. Now my speed's at 12, so what is that? What is that actually? Let's check out the hub area. So, gives you a sense of the scale of the game. This is the, the wing's rest. Pretty cool, right? You can head here and do some alchemy. Yeah. And what he'll do. Salutations out. Alchemy. And you can add things in, and I can make things. There's also forging. And it has formulas right here. So health potion, mana vial, throwing daggers, antidotes, crystal shard. If I were to add... So it tells me the recipes, I can just add things. I should have a level up in here just doing this. Oh, the moon. Cries to us in our time of needs. The moon's having problems. <laughs> and how you get here is the odd demon anime girl will talk to you and teleport you down. Once you access that area with the switch I showed earlier. Come on. I'll level up my torch. Is it ready? I think it's interesting how you have to equip the rings to use magic like that. Equipped empty in that spot, yeah. And it's ready. Oh, it's good. Good. So to upgrade weapons, you take them here and put them in the oil. Enhance the weapon. Iron torch. <laughs> okay. Now it's an iron torch. Yeah, it looks a little more irony. So now it deals double damage. A simple torch, but upgrade with iron bands to protect the wearer's hands. It's more than a simple torch, obviously, because it hasn't burned out. So now it has 60% guard. It deals double damage. It's not as good as my sword, of course, but it's pretty good. So yeah, progression. <laughs> not as much as I would like. You can also save here, but... You know. Progression, yay. I'm going to put a little break in here, just so I can figure out what the hell is going on with that, that crypt. But this will be it for zone one, I think. For Lunacid. But I'm gonna head back to the that area and try to figure out what the hell I'm supposed to do in there to get in to make prog progress. <laughs> a little frustrating. Couldn't make it. That's why something stupid. Ugh, irksome. But I will find it. Anyway, this is Lunacid. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. Bye.